uh, Sasha, um, Stefanos said that from all the players that he played this year, uh, you are the one who made the most improvement in your game, in your all-around game since last year where he beat you. Do you agree with that? <laughs> I think Yannick Sinner has something to say against that, but um, I'm, I'm happy he he feels this way. Um, that's, that's a big compliment for me, uh, from his side. So thank you to him for that. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm trying, I'm working on things, I'm, I'm trying different things for sure. Um, tennis doesn't stop, you know, you have to continue finding new ways to, to improve and you see by how Yannick and Carlos are playing right now, you know, tennis is becoming so fast and so aggressive that, yeah, you need to find ways to improve your game. You've, play no. No. You've played 84 matches this year mm -hmm. until now. There will be the ATP finals next, maybe two more matches, sure, maybe two more yeah. matches in this tournament. Do you know who is the player who played the most single matches in one season during the history of tennis and how many matches? In history of tennis? Yes. Modern. Evgeny Kafelnikov. 106 in 19. It's him? No. Oh, no? Villas. Guillermo Villas in okay. 77, 150. One f 150 matches. 150 matches. Well, I'm never going to play 150 <laughs> matches in a year. So my no. question is, how do you feel after 84 matches? Um, I, I've, I've had this question actually today during a TV press conference. Um, and I've said, you know, in, in the first six months of the year were fantastic for me. So I did play a lot of matches there. You know, I was, I was winning quite a lot, which is great. Um, and I was going far in, in all the turns. The last few months for me have been more difficult which means actually I didn't play so many matches so I had more free time I also pulled out of some events with health issues so actually I feel fine I feel motivated to to find my game again and to kind of improve also um, so actually I'm playing matches I'm practicing before the matches I'm practicing after the matches every day um, because I want to improve and I want to to get better and you know achieve the big goals that I still have and to your question, I feel okay. <laughs> I feel fine. Sasha, congratulations. It's a great win, and you're looking better than, let's say, from 2020 yeah. when you reached the finals here. Uh, I'm interested in uh, your opinion on, uh, let's say, this notion of the big three in tennis, because uh, we're probably looking at the duopoly now of Sinner and Alcaraz, and whether uh, this relationship can drive them towards huge successes like was the case with Novak, Rafa, and Roger. Uh, you, with uh, the high goals that you have, and you just mentioned, do you think that uh, uh, you are the number three there, not the third, but the third person in this new triangle that could uh, make the change in the uh, imminent history of tennis in the coming years? I mean, for sure, they're number one and two right now. Um, you can see that they both won two Grand Slams this year, so there's no question about that. Um, you know, even if I finish ahead of Carlos this year, which is still a possibility, you know, um, I still believe that they're number one and two just by the things that they have achieved, right? Um, I think in my case, because I'm a bit older, it's different. Um, you know, I feel like. By the end of 2021, I was one of the best players in the world. I felt like, uh, you know, Novak, Daniel and myself were kind of sharing the big turners between us. Uh, and in, in 2021, especially the last six months, you know, I won the gold medal. Novak won Wimbledon. Daniel won US Open. I won the World Tour Finals. So it was kind of shared. And then I feel like I was going towards this direction uh, of becoming maybe number one in the world. Uh, in 2022, where I started the season very well, and you know, and, and the French Open, I felt like it was my chance uh, to maybe win my first Grand Slam and to become world number one because I would have become world number one at that tournament. Um, but then it happened what happened, uh, and it kind of went out of my control. So I always say I took a two year break from being one of the best players in the world, I took a two year break from being a contender at Grand Slams because 2022 obviously I didn't play anymore 
in 2023 was my comeback season. I was not a contender for, for winning Grand Slams. I was not a contender for winning big tournaments. I was trying my best. I was working hard. But for me to win a big title was, was very far away uh, still. So I, I do feel like this season was the, is the first season again um, after about two, two and a half years where I was, where I was a contender. Um, and again, I'm still trying to improve things. I'm still trying to get better and hopefully next year will we'll look a little bit different than, than this year with, with the big titles and um, hopefully I can play a role in it as well. This, this is my goal still. Yeah. Hi, Sasha. Um, you had some trouble with your lung the past few yeah. weeks, a few months. Uh, how do you feel? Did you recover fully? And are you at 100% now for the end of the season? Because you're looking great this, this week in Paris. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I have to go to do the scans and do the tests. I'm doing this after this week. I'm going to Berlin to, to do the tests. Um, I do feel okay. I feel fine, um, but they, they also told me, the doctors told me, you'll gradually get better, but to be back at 100% will take a few months because this is not something that just goes away like an illness within one or two weeks and then that's it. It will take a few months, but I feel, I feel okay. I feel not like I'm getting super tired on the court or I struggle to breathe, but also, to be fair, the, the court here is so fast that there's rarely any long rallies. Um, So uh, I think that that is maybe helping me this week a little bit as well. What, what did you need to practice after the match, uh, and, and how long did it uh, there take? Is, there is just a a plan that I have what I want to improve until the Australian Open, and it's not about the match. It's not about today. It's not about about yesterday. It's not to improve for tomorrow. It's imp for, for me. It's to improve for the Australian Open. And uh, I have a few things that I feel like other players are doing better than me, and I want to to improve on those those things.